Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jibola. I'm a final year medical student living in Nigeria. I make medicine and lifestyle content and I have a lot of amazing videos on my channel. Do well to check them out and don't forget to subscribe if you are new to this channel. So today, without wasting much time, we'll be talking about medical school. Basically, just breaking down medical school from 100 level to 600 level. That is from the first year of your medical school to the very last year. So what is it about? What are the things that you're going to be doing from 100 level to 600 level? I'm going to be explaining in this video every single thing from year to year. So stick around and enjoy. Don't go anywhere. Without any further ado, let's get right into this video. So the first thing I'm going to be telling you guys is that, yes, I know they tell us that medical school is six years, but <laughs> actually it is six plus x so depending on your medical school it can be more but it can be less so six years plus x depending on your medical school if you are just going into medical school you want to do well to find out how it is in that school that you are going you want to confirm because the reasons for this delay are asu strike some schools are under the asu so they go through the asu strike which will cause a delay and some other schools because of accreditation you just want to find out how it is in your school and you want to know what you are going into because actually you need to be mentally prepared for this because many of us before we entered medical school didn't even know that medical school was going to be more than six years so you have to be prepared for whatever is coming so you want to find out from people in that school how many years it takes to do medicine in your school that's something that is very very important now medical school is supposed to be six levels that's 100 level to 600 level and it has been divided into two the 100 level to your 300 level is going to be your preclinical years why the 300 level to 600 level is the clinical year so i'll be starting with your 100 level so your 100 level what are you expecting in your 100 level basically the courses that you did in your work that's your physics your chemistry your biology mathematics and ges we call it ges in my school mind you everything i'm going to be telling you today is based on my school because i have not experienced any other medical school and medical school differs it's basically the same settings but it differs from one school to another but i'm telling you for my school which is relatively almost the same in every other school so you're expecting basically the same thing just a few difference here and there so you're going to be doing your biology your physics your chemistry your maths and your gs which is like your general studies english entrepreneurship and your philosophy so basically that's what you're doing your 100 level so pretty much the criteria to move into 200 level is basically to pass all your courses and 50 is the cut of mark for medical students so you have to get above 50. i know you are going to be like that 50 is easy i mean it's just 50 marks i can get it but it's where you start that you understand that 50 is not easy i kid you not 50 is not easy but yeah basically you just need to get 50 to pass in medical school so if you fail any course you have to repeat that 100 level so you have to pass all your courses to move to 200 level now 200 level things start getting interesting in 200 level we are going to be offering three major courses which is your anatomy physiology and biochemistry yeah just three but anatomy is divided into three we have the gross anatomy we have the histology and the embryology those three subtopics are under anatomy as a whole and then you have your biochemistry and your physiology in your anatomy you are basically learning about the human body in your gross anatomy you are going to learn about the things the part of the human body that you can see the organs that you make use of your cadavers you do practicals and then for your physiology you learn about the normal functioning of the body they teach you guys about instruments that's in your practicals and then biochemistry which is about chemicals basically your gross anatomy has also been divided into systems so after each system Say you do your upper limb and lower limb you do your head and neck so there are different systems so after each one you take your in-course exam more like a test for your major professional exam which is the mb exam that's the medical board exam so it's just like you do your test and have a major exam basically that's how the in courses are they are just pretty much tests like your ca that will basically add to your major exam and they carry mostly 40 marks the all the in courses you're not going to do just one in course you're going to do like a series of in courses as regard your school anyhow they want to do it because my school we just do our in courses after each system and then at the end they calculate all your in course scores and 
over 40 then the major mb exam is 60 so they're going to add everything together 200 level for my school there's no exam you're just going to go into 300 level like that so 300 level 200 level you just do it like that so it is in 300 level you take your first professional exam which is the mbbs part one yes and what you are going to be doing in this exam is you are going to be doing the mcq which is the multiple choice questions you do your practicals and a viral exam which you also call orals so for your mcq exam basically they are going to ask you a question and it will have options a b c d each option is a question if you get me so you have to say if it's true or if it's false so that's where they tell you that you can't guess because if you guess the negative markings if you are missing that question you're going to lose some marks so it might be 0 0.2 might be 0 0.5 might be 1 in some cases so they just try to make you sure of what you are doing you also have the practicals which is another aspect of the part one exam in these practicals basically you are going to do the practicals you've been doing all through your 200 level 300 level they're just going to like ask you questions on it and all of that then you go through the viral exam in the viral exam is an oral exam so it's like a one-on-one -on -one exam with you and an examiner and the tricky part is that the examiner you're going to meet is an external examiner so they're going to bring that lecturer from another school yes you're going to see a lecturer from another school to, to test you on things that you've been taught basically just to remove bias and set some level of standard to the exam so they bring an external examiner to ask you questions and majorly viva max is usually like five marks sometimes 10 but most times it's five marks it can also help to distinguish a distinction candidate from a normal you know regular student because if you have 67 and you need three marks to get to 70 because the cutoff for distinction in my school is 70 marks but in other schools you know they have different cut off for their distinction so if you need three marks you can use it to know if you really deserve that distinction or they should leave your 67 like that so basically that's all about the MB part one after this exam in medical school they don't say pass or fail they say you certified your examiners that means your examiners are pleased with your performance so they will release a list of the people that have passed that exam and their penalties for failing the exam so you're going to be writing three different courses so that's anatomy biochemistry and physiology if you fail one of these courses you're going to have to repeat that exam in about three months or so then when you pass that exam you get to join the others that moved to clinical so if you fail one you have to receive that exam but if you fail two you have to repeat that year you have to repeat the whole 300 level year before you take the mba again if you fail three then you'll be advised to go to another department those are the penalties for failing the mbbs part one exam now moving on to clinicals now things are getting more interesting clinical level is a very complicated level guys it's not as simple and as straightforward as the preclinicals because you already know what you're doing in the preclinicals but for the clinical year it varies from school to school it's just the arrangements that majorly differentiates them so 400 level is supposed to be 18 months but it might differ you know from schools to schools but basically it's supposed to be 18 months under normal circumstances without any you know any of those things i said earlier 400 level is the longest year in med school and is known to be the hardest so let's get into it what are you going to be doing in 400 level you are basically doing two courses basically but there are other <laughs> courses that you take but the major ones known for that year is part and farm that's the pathology and pharmacology but the pathology is divided into four you'll be taking your chemical pathology your morbid anatomy or the histo parts that's histo pathology medical microbiology and your hematology so those are the four pathologies that you are taking alongside your pharmacology so pathology is basically the study of diseases so you'll be taught the normal things in your preclinicals and you'll be taught the diseased parts in your clinicals so basically your 400 level your pathology is all about learning about diseases why pharmacology is learning about drugs so your pharmacology you are learning about drugs everything about drugs their mechanism of action their side effects this year is very demanding i can't even lie to you alongside your pathology and pharmacology which is already a lot you're also going to start your medicine and surgery postings that is you'll be starting your medicine one and your surgery one that's m1 and s1 in your 400 level you also take your community medicine posting but that would have started right from your preclinical days 
I forgot to mention community medicine, which you would also start in 200 level. But we really don't take it serious because, you know, there's no MB until you get to 600 level. But you should take it serious starting from your 200 level because they are going to ask you questions starting from your 200 level. So for your 400 level, you're also going to do your community medicine posting. So you start with your community medicine, urban posting, your M1, your S1, your parts, your farm. It's a lot, guys. 400 level is a lot. It's no, nobody's mates. And this is the level whereby you get to see your classmates less because now they are going to divide you guys into groups, into smaller groups for your postings. And in these groups, you, you tend not to do the same things with your friends, with your classmates, with your colleagues, because you guys will see different cases, although they will give you guys block lectures. There's something called block lectures. Basically, before you start going to the hospital, that is, I'm talking about your medicine surgery posting here. Before you start going to the hospital, there's a two-week period where they tend to teach you guys all the topics that they have for you guys. So basically, you are going to be seeing those cases when you now get to the hospital. So what do you do in this posting? You basically just follow doctors around. It's apprenticeship, guys, basically. What they do in the mechanic shop. Yes, that's what we do in the hospital. We basically just follow doctors around, see what they are doing, see how they manage patients. Just seeing everything because by the time you see it, it makes more sense to you when you are reading it. So you are just being exposed to the clinicals, you are being exposed to patients. It makes a lot more sense than when you were not seeing anything. That's why it's called the clinical year. So pretty much is a very interesting year. And at the end of your posting, you are going to write the EOP, known as the end of posting exam. In preclinicals, you were writing in courses, but when you move to clinicals, you start writing the end of posting exams because now you are doing postings and not, you know, regular classes. So it's postings and the pathology and pharmacology have three postings. You have the posting one, posting two, posting three. So at the end of everything, you're going to write another MBBS exam. That's the MB2 exam. And in this exam, you are pretty much only doing your pathology and pharmacology MB. So they are just going to test you on your pathology and pharmacology and again, it's going to be multiple choice questions Your MCQ, your theory and your viva So basically that's the same thing that's going to be happening this time around So I've already explained what this exam means. So I'm not going to go back to it And if you're able to certify your examiner, that is if you pass that exam, you Are now liable to enter 500 level. So now you're now a 500 level medical student so now you are in 500 level trust me it gets easier as you go don't worry it's getting easier yes so in this level you can do for eight months or more or less you know it depends on your school so basically you are doing your obsessive and gynecology and your pediatrics those are the major courses although you also take your special postings and your community medicine that's the rural community medicine remember we did urban community medicine 400 level so now you are doing your rural where we get to go to the village in my school we went to ilututun for our rural posting for a period of time to do community entry and all of those community health work so basically that's what you are doing your 500 level and it gets more interesting here because everything that you are being taught you are going to be experimenting them like you are going to be seeing them in the hospital so now it makes more sense medicine starts making more sense to you in your 500 level 500 level is when you start your overnight calls which can be a mixture of pain and pleasure for medical students because pleasure in the sense that you're going to be sleeping over in the hospital in the call room and you're going to see emergencies as they come you're going to see patients as they come you're going to participate in managing the patient it's just so interesting and fun but the pain is that you have to you know sacrifice your sleep because you still have to resume with your other classmates the next morning yes 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 so basically 500 level is very interesting you get to start your special postings in 500 level and for my school the special postings we do in 500 level include radiology anesthesiology and your psychiatry one and then you're going to also do your medicine two and surgery two in my school we did it before we even started 500 level at all so we after 400 level pattern farm we entered straight into medicine 2 and surgery 2 that's your m2 and s2 before we started the work for 500 level proper which is your obstetrics and gynecology and pediatrics there are two postings for these courses that's the option o and g and pediatrics we have the senior posting and the junior posting in my school they separated the senior posting and the junior posting with our community medicine but in other schools i don't know how it goes in other schools so you i just know that there are two postings and after completing this junior posting and senior posting i'm going to write your third mb exam which is going to include the o and g and the pediatrics 
and how does this exam go you are pretty much going to do your mcq your theory picture test and oski the picture test they put pictures up with questions and you have to answer in minutes or depending on the time that they give you it can be one minute it can be two minutes so you have to answer those questions on in on that picture and the slide just is like a slide share so if you are not done in that period of time it moves to the next slide so that's basically what picture test is and then we have oski for the oski you're going to be asked short questions that are clinically oriented you can be asked to examine a patient to click a patient's instruments all sort of things you must have learned during your postings and then you also do the oral exam and now you are in 600 level which is the final year in medical school the 600 level basically you are doing three uh, <laughs> you are doing three major courses in your 600 level that is your medicine your surgery and your community medicine that's your m3 and s3 and community medicine interesting right yes i told you guess is here as you go but in my school we do our m3 and s3 for three three months that's six months just diving so 600 level in my school is for a period of one year so the first six months is for your medicine and surgery then the rest you you do your community medicine that's how you get to finish up your project and your community medicine you do your medical legal medical legal i know is not really common in other schools but we do it in my school so you do your medical legal and then you do your special postings we started with our special postings for us so your special postings are basically just two two weeks and they're really short and you have to get everything you want to get in that two weeks because you also have end of posting exam for those period of two two weeks so basically the special postings you are doing your section level is the ent that's the year nose and throat your psychiatry too and your ophthalmology basically when you are done with all of these courses in your 600 level you take your final mbbs exam which is your mbbs part four so yes you get to take your final exam which is for your medicine surgery and community medicine and then when you pass voila you're a doctor fresh brand new doctor yeah those are the things you have to do before you become a doctor in nigeria for reference i attend the university of medical sciences on do so i just broke down how we go through our medical school from 100 level to 600 level these are the things i wish i knew before i entered medical school because i just came in blindly and i just started moving with the flow so it's better you do your research you know what to do you know you are aware of every step you know even until i got to clinicals i didn't know how it was in clinicals i was basically just going with the flow which is terrible i mean it's bad you should be prepared for what is coming ahead you should be ready that's why i'm making this video for somebody that needs it and you can also share it to people in medical school already or people that are just aspiring to get into medical school so i hope i've been able to help somebody if you have any questions you can reach out to me on my instagram which will be linked in the bio or you can write them in the comment section and i'll do well to respond we've come to the end of today's video if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like share and subscribe i'll see you guys in my next one bye